Yup, you read that title correctly. Instead of being crushed by the copious amounts of RNG in this game through battling, I get flinched here, I'm actually done. Of course! This game sucks! Instead, I've cooked up a different challenge for this video. Now listen up for a second. The challenge in this video is to catch Pokemon. I know, right? Absolutely groundbreaking. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All jokes aside, the question that may be going through your brain right now is, how is this any different from playing Pokemon normally? And my answer to that is to see if I can catch 18 different types of Pokemon. But since I thought that alone would be boring, I've gone ahead and added two restrictions to this complicated charade. The first and less important one is that I can only use Ultra Balls and only 30 of them at that. The more brutal restrictions that I only had 12 minutes to catch all 18 Pokemon or else I would lose the challenge. With that being said, is it really possible for me to catch 18 different types of Pokemon in 12 minutes? Well, you'll have to stick to the end to find out. Alright, I'm gonna start the 12 minute timer starting now. Now, I didn't just go into this challenge completely blind, so I did attempt to use my brain a little bit here and try to form a plan. Alright, so my, my plan going into this, I want to find the easiest Pokemon to find. So we're gonna get the less obscure types out of the way. I can actually get a few types in this area. Yes, the first place I decided to fly to was the South Province Area 3, which actually yielded some good results for me early, as I was able to secure a few of the types required, which were Rock, Fighting, Flying, Electric, and Fire. So with these five types locked in, I had some solid progress achieved around the three and a half minute mark. After catching Charcadet, I felt I'll waste more time sticking around this area where the only types I missed out on were the Psychic type Spoink and the normal type Gumshoes. Of course those missed types were on my mind I was already trying to figure out the next destination of where I would go. The choices of my location left me indecisive for a moment until... I think the best area for me to go right now is here. So I need to get a... Actually an Ice type. Shoot. Yeah, let's get an Ice type. As you just saw, I settled on Monte Nevera and immediately went north from the Pokemon Center through the exit to find an ice type. Now I wasn't thinking about this at the time due to this area being an improv choice, but this specific space has more to offer than just a singular ice type. So this was actually a stroke of good luck for me. Or was it? I'll explain in further detail a little more about that later. Oh, Snover. Okay, this could be the grass type actually. That's good. Oh yeah, let me explain this real quickly. I forgot to mention earlier, but with the Pokemon with dual typings like Snover here, I would just declare which type I would count it as and obviously can't change it later. So yeah, dual typings are convenient. After shoving the Snover into the box, since I had a full party of Pokemon already from the other Pokemon I caught, this okay. graveyard ran right no, into me, what the heck? providing me with an optimal time save, which was crucial in this challenge. However, blessings can sometimes appear as double-edged swords. Get in the ball now. No. After the first graveyard use dig, I was forced to flee in frustration as staying in that battle wastes time since you can't throw Pokeballs since it's underground. So after the second graveyard I found was caught after the third Ultra Ball, I didn't think I would lose more time here. That is until another graveyard impeded my progression. Hey, get what the heck? These are so annoying. After running yet again from the Force Encounter, I chose to acquire Citadel as no. the Ice Type. Come on. Yes, okay, good. After putting Citadel in the dark corner of the PC box, something unexpected happened. What just happened? What? No! Just press B on that. No, are you serious? That's so annoying. That's so bad. <sighs> of course, as you just saw, Shinx tried to evolve. Even though I did cancel the evolution by furiously mashing the B button to save some time, a choice is suddenly presented to me. That is to either leave it in my party to save time, or to eat the time loss and put it in the box. Let's see what I decided to do. Yeah, I didn't put it in the box. Greedily thinking about the prospect of saving time, looking back it definitely was a mistake that somehow got worse, but I'll explain that a little more later. After that eventful evolution, I spotted a Bronzong, in which since it had a dual typing, I could get a typing check off the list. So out of its psychic and steel typing, I ultimately landed on... I'm gonna make it steel type. You heard it right, steel type. Since my thought process at the time was that it would be an easier task to find a psychic type later, I decided to go with the steel type here. After getting the Bronzong, oh look at that, a stubborn idiot has to cancel another evolution cutscene instead of being smart and throwing it in the box. 
Now surprisingly, this here actually isn't where the evolution problem got worse. It'll make more sense once we get there. Oh. Are you kidding me? For now, after yet a fourth grief guard wants to greet us with an unwelcome encounter, I look at the time and start to semi-panic. No! Okay, I gotta, re I gotta go. Picking a new area as quickly as possible, but the earlier progress had completely shattered at the hands of a gang of graveyards. I hastily decided on the casserole, casserole, casseroya watchtower. After shooting myself in the foot even what more by no, messing up the why is it? Uh, I need to mark that. That's not good. All that. After arriving the casserole watchtower, I'm greeted with a few Pokemon like Scyther and Copius, but the one that stood out to me the most was the Dragon type Tachigiri. Dragon type, perfect. Now this right here was a short-sighted move by me because the Pokemon I was trying to catch was Tatsugiri. And for those of you who may not know, but a higher catch rate in Pokemon means that the Pokemon is easier to catch. Simple enough, right? For example, let's take Rookity. This Pokemon has a catch rate of 255, while Tatsugiri's catch rate is at an astoundingly low number of 100. So you can only imagine how detrimental that is for a Pokemon's catch rate to be that low in a timed challenge. But it didn't even get that far into the Ultra Ball count because this is... Oh great, that's... oh wow, that's... no. That's not it at all. I lost all that time for nothing. That's insane. So not only did I waste time with two Ultra Balls completely failing, but Tatsugiri ended up using Memento, making the time I wasted even more worthless. I didn't think it could get any worse until this happened. There's no way. I pressed B, what the heck? Oh. Yep, that right there was Rickety trying to evolve as well. No. So at this point, I had to go through a double evolution and not even come out of the ordeal with the Tatsugiri captured for my trouble. With this gigantic failure, I knew the end was nigh as I took a shot at one last attempt at a wild Tropius. Even that last ditch effort was for nothing. As the alarm went off from my phone, that is when I admitted my solemn defeat. And it's over. In the end of this short-lived journey, I was only able to catch 9 out of the 18 types of Pokemon in those 12 minutes. Now, looking back at the design of the challenge itself, I think I may have been too harsh with the time limit of only 12 minutes, but I definitely could have benefited from some kind of status condition like sleep or paralysis to increase the odds of success. Nevertheless, I did have some fun with this video as it was a refreshing experience from battling itself in the game. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.